Hi Camilla. Hello. So I've met you in Manchester. Yes. What's it like being vegan in Manchester? I think it's really good actually. There's um, lots of vegan cafes and restaurants. Uh, shopping is easy. Um, and I suppose historically um, this was one of the places where the vegetarian society started and there's a, there's a restaurant, gourmet restaurant, very fancy, um, named after that 1847 because that's when it started. Um, surrounded by some beautiful animal shelters and um, you know, nature with lots of animals in them. So I think it's a really good place um, and it looks like the movement is actually growing, you know, more cafes and more mm. um, Big, big vegan fairs and festivals and stuff like that so so it's quite nice actually yeah that's cool <laughs> so you're a student yes. so what do you study I study the um, the history of uh, art I suppose um, there's a lot of kind of feminist theory in there so I'm doing a PhD um, and teaching at the university um, and uh, yeah, in terms of being vegan, I find it quite easy. I mean, the, the University of Manchester has like uh, vegan options in their cafes and stuff. Um, there's independent cafes around that will cater to vegans. Um, and they're quite supportive, you know, whenever you go to an event or conference, they'll always provide vegan food as an option, which is kind of changing in academia. It's becoming easier and easier. Um, but then there's... You know, there's difficult things such as animal testing. They do a lot of animal testing here. Um, and they recently, for example, they wanted to, to give students who were stressed for exam a room full of puppies to relax. <laughs> so, uh, some ways they're completely disconnected and in some ways they're very considerate. And I think it's quite interesting that it's the food and the economic stuff that they're considerate and, you know, anything to do with actual live animals, they're like... Mm. Do people protest outside the labs when they do tests? They, yeah, yeah, they have. Uh, not so much students, mm. but um, kind of, I suppose, like anarchist groups have done it. But there's no point. They're not going to change. Um, they're not going to change because it's tied to cancer research. And, mm. you know, I appreciate that's a really tricky dilemma uh, because it does, um, there, there are treatments that come from that. But um, it's... Um, it's something to, to think about that these animals are, you know, are here and hopefully mm. they're not suffering too much. Uh, but people really protested that, that puppy room idea and it was cancelled in the end. So, so yeah, there's still a bit of a movement. <laughs> yeah. Normally a lot of people say it's either animals or humans. Yes. Um, like how do you yeah. talk about, how do you have that conversation with people? I don't know, I mean, as uh, we were talking earlier, weren't we? And, I think in the start I really wanted to have those conversations and now I don't, I wait until someone brings it up and usually those kind of philosophical, ethical questions are brought up, the questions are about food, what mm. do you eat, where do you get your protein from, uh, you know, are you going to die of iron deficiency, this and that and they're not really about the ethical things and I think that's understandable because, you know, Technically, I believe that we're killing and torturing animals, and that's not a very pleasant conversation to have. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think people do care more about humans, of course they do. Um, and uh, maybe all species care most about their species, mm. but we happen to be in such a in a position where we have a lot of control, and it's a shame that we're um, we're not using that control for good, you know. But we can't even take care of a lot of humans. So uh, you look at the homelessness problem here in Manchester; it's just exploded the last couple of months it? so if we can't take care of you know our own then yeah. how are we going to take care of other species so it's not surprising but um, but I think it's true yeah do you think it, maybe if we just increase the amount of compassion we have for every living being we'd solve a lot of problems yeah yeah of course but you know how do you how do you do that and I think compassion looks very different from person to person. You get all these, like, you know, the people who are leading the public discourse on on what's, like, cool to eat and what's cool to do, like, hipster culture, you know. They, they often completely disregard ethical questions because it's kind of embarrassing. Mm. I suppose it's often traditionally kind of a female thing, like, you know, to care.
care for animals and care for babies and all of that stuff. And I don't see it as part of compassion, like that word. Mm. You never see it in the media because it's just there's no money in it, there's no glory in it, and um, I think um, it's, it is very important. But maybe it has to start with children. I don't know. I think they've had some success with kind of um, you know like vegan societies coming into some private schools here, and that's a whole completely oh, different cool. conversation. And talking about, you know, these are very like liberal, left-leaning schools, talking about uh, how we must respect animals and stuff mm. like that. And maybe that's the way to go, you know. Maybe as adults, uh, if the compassion isn't like ingrained into us, it's going to be a little bit harder, not impossible, but harder. But yeah, it's a really important, um, important word. Mm. Um, I know there's like a quite a famous vegan, Colleen Patrick Goodrow, who does this podcast and she also does books and I always listen to her and she's she's American and I think in America you're kind of allowed to be a bit more like oh compassion and love and you know all this stuff but if it works I don't know <laughs> um, but she always talks about that we have to have compassion for humans and animals mm. and I think that's true actually because I find myself like the more I read about a horrible thing happening to animals um, the more angry you, you can get misanthropic you know that you hate your own species and, yeah. and that's not going to serve anyone any good so there's always this very fine balance mm. um, but it, but it's better to to think about these difficult questions than, than than not to do it and I think before I was vegan I just didn't think mm. about it and that's quite crazy actually because it's so important yeah Another one was that you said you were studying feminism. Yeah. So do you think there's a link between feminism and animals? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, all social justice movements can draw on each other, um, and we want people to be happy and healthy and loved, and um, that's what all social social justice is about. But you know, to, to consider animals as um, beings and important beings, I mean the. The repercussions of that are so enormous, you know, because if we were to consider that animals have feelings and lives and loves, then you would have to consider all humans. But, you know, women in particular, um, female animals in particular, are extremely exploited. I mean, you look at like there's mostly female lab animals are treated badly because, you know, they have these cycles of, you know, not menstruation, I suppose, but they have cycles of, of hormones. So that they can only be used once a month and then they're tossed away, right? And then you have obviously the milk industry, uh, which is such an interesting conversation partner to, you know, the politics of breastfeeding in human and how that's not okay and mm. how they're trying to sell milk, you know. So we're not allowed to see women lactate, but we all drink another species. And then obviously you have the whole thing about the mothering instinct and all the baby animals taken from their mothers. And um, I think it's just too painful for, for a lot of people to think about. But sometimes I'm surprised that women don't, you know, whether you want children or not, it's, it's something we can do, we can have children. And we have these hormonal cycles and we have these body parts and, and there's, there's some really similar things there. Um, and when I think about that, I kind of, you can almost kind of feel it. There's kind of a solidarity, it sounds a bit cheesy, but... So I definitely do think it's a feminist issue and I'm always surprised because I go to a lot of feminist conferences, mm. both academic and not. If anyone, I mean, I don't do it a lot, but if anyone brings up the animal issue, you know, they're often shut down. Mm. Um, and I think that's because the feminist movement is tackling a huge important issue, but the animal issue is, you know, it's also equally enormous and big. and. To put those two together, I mean, where would you start? Yeah. Um, but yes, I, I, I do think it's... Uh, and, then, and then on the positive side, I mean, being very negative here, I mean, look at all the women who are leading that animal rights uh, movement. Mm. Uh, if it's like podcasts or writing or law or academia or protests or, you know, people like yourself, I'm, I'm struck by how many women take it up. and. Recently, I, I listened to a really interesting podcast. Um, it was from it's a feminist podcast called Stuff Mum Never Told You, and they talked about feminism and vegetarianism and veganism. And they they talked about these studies that shows that in in, in heterosexual couples, it's usually 
the woman who goes vegetarian and vegan and then the man follows and that's <laughs> certainly the case in my relationship mm. um, but there's like enormous statistic evidence for this that women lead yeah, that's in so that cool. and whether that's because we've got like ingrained compassion or something I mean I don't, I don't know but I think whatever it is, or maybe it's nothing, maybe it's just random. I mean, we should really celebrate that. Mm. Um, and thus, you know, saving lots of animals, actually. You mentioned that you went vegetarian, or was it vegan yeah. first? Vegetarian first, yeah. And then your partner followed? Yes, Maybe yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so I was, um, I'm from Norway, and been. my dad was vegetarian. Then I became vegetarian around 12 or something, and then, but I've been vegan for, for five years now, and um, <clears throat> been been with my with my partner for four years. Uh, and he was a meat eater, but very considerate, you know, loves animals, all of that. Wouldn't eat lamb, wouldn't eat calf, you know, very <laughs> specific, just like I used to be when mm. I was little. Um, and uh, in the start, we would have conversations about this, very painful conversations, because I, th I, I was... I think it was always implied every time he ate, and this wasn't necessarily my intention, sometimes it was <laughs> that you were doing something bad, and you're a bad human being, um, and you know, can a relationship survive like that? I think a lot of vegans really think that way, mm. and uh, I, well, I know they do, because I've had conversations with other, you know, they happen all to be women. Um, and I was really frustrated about it, especially social events, because in the home you can control it a bit, but it's stuff like, you know, weddings or family things or travel mm. suddenly you're in an unfamiliar environment and you're taking different sides and you know it's very easy for, for there to be a fight so I don't exactly know I mean I kind of not asked him what what really did it but I remember we had a huge fight and, um, and he said you know I'll try and and I think he just really didn't find it a problem at all yeah and I thought, you know, he'd go vegetarian first, but he went full on vegan, and I thought, you know, that's that's great because he already had these little seeds, and maybe that's the way to help someone. Mm. The things like he wouldn't eat certain animals. I mean, then you have an ethical position, don't you? I should have maybe I could have focused more on that rather than focusing on all the things he didn't do. Mm. But anyway, so it's been been a couple of years now, and and it, it does change the relationship. And you know, to anyone who is in in a vegan and non-vegan relationship, you know, there is hope. There's so many stories of this happening. Um, and if not, there's practical things you can do, of course. Um, but perhaps, I, I mean, I found that preaching didn't help. It just helped to kind of lead by example. And just yeah. try to be happy with your situation. Try just to live a good, healthy vegan life. And, and hopefully they'll be watching you, you know, because it's always in the background. Mm. And would you like apply that to just everyday vegan outreach? Like encouraging others to go vegan? Yeah, I suppose I would actually. I mean, yeah, I suppose that's it, that that situation has taught me something that I've not really thought about because um, it was so personal. But yeah, I suppose you could do that with everyone. I mean, you could you could ask them questions and you could latch on to the little things they do rather than focus on the huge thing of going mm. vegan. You know. Because it's not like, you know, you can, there's no such thing as a perfect vegan, is there? Just like yeah. there's no such thing as a perfect woman, a feminist, or, you know, we all slip up and, and the society isn't geared towards us. Mm. So it's not going to be perfect and easy all the time. But I don't think people know that. The mainstream thinks that when you're vegan, you're like super healthy <laughs> and never get ill. And, but at the same time, you don't have enough protein. And, mm. you know, there's all these um, complexities that they don't see. So yeah, I suppose it's up to us to kind of uh, focus on the, on the positives rather than the negatives. And I'm being very negative with you here now because I know you're kind of, you know, a comrade, but um, I do try to be quite positive about it. Yeah. And not draw attention to like the killing of animals all the time because you just become that person, don't you? Mm. Like, oh, here she goes again. <laughs> and that, I mean, there should be allowed to talk about these things, but so, you know, society is as it's a challenge, it is. Isn't it? Yeah, to do cake instead. <laughs> <laughs> so people sometimes think veganism is quite extreme. Yes. So what's the most extreme thing you've done? Um, when I was 18, I was really fed up. So I spent all my money on one of my tickets to Mexico. 
uh, and I stayed there for seven seven months. Wow. Mexico and the U.S. I had a great time, but you know, looking back, that was quite extreme. I like, lived in like this commune with some hippies and stuff, and could have been quite dangerous. But yeah, I mean, compare compare the potential danger of that to like vegan food. <laughs> Put it all in perspective. <laughs> How did you get back? How did you get um, back home? I I worked. I got a job mm. um, at this commune. And it's funny actually, they did serve vegetarian, vegetarian food there. But um, yeah, it just worked. And then I got back and I started studying. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what influenced you to become vegan? Um, I think uh, it's probably down to my dad, who is vegetarian since, you know, since the 70s. It's uh, so my dad and our dog, a family dog. I'm my only child, so she was kind of like a sister to me. Um, so that was all vegetarian, and then vegan, I had a really close friend who turned vegan, and I always admired her, um, and so I thought I'll just try for a week, mm. and it was fine. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any tips for people that want to go vegan? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. If you, if you want to go vegan, I think it's really crucial to find another vegan, and just ask all the questions, mm. um, and find a community. Um, and I think also, you know, whatever you think is going to be a problem, whether it's whether it's protein, or whether it's getting enough food, or whether it's losing weight, or you know, communicating with relatives, you need to focus on that. Like, don't just shove it away. Um, so, so ask, find a vegan, and it could be, you know, online now. Of yeah. course, find a good like the Vegan Society is great in the UK. Find a good person to ask questions, do some research on the things that worry you and maybe come up with a couple of solutions for that so you, you know what to do when it happens because it will happen mm. and you will get asked awkward questions and then just try not to you know it's a really serious issue like tr trying to like change the world aren't we and uh, it has to it can't be serious all the time so so try to make a nice recipe of something fun that you used to like yeah. but make it vegan or you know just try to be happy to, you know, don't let it all like wash over you because you, you're part of the solution actually now uh, and you're not causing pain mm. uh, in that way anymore. So you should celebrate that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Camilla. Thank you. <laughs>